The novel coronavirus crisis is here. We know this is affecting fundraising. However, what techniques can you still utilize during these challenging health and economic times? Hi, I'm Bill Stanjakevich, joined today by Dr. Tim Seiler. He's the Henry Rosso Fellow of Philanthropic Fundraising at the Indiana University Lilly Family School of Philanthropy. And Tim's veteran career has seen the ups and downs of fundraising, the downs often happening during economic crises, after natural disasters, during health concerns, and uh, those lessons learned from his career can apply today with specific techniques. And Tim, thanks so much for being with us Welcome. on the first day from the Fundraising School podcast. And again, you've been through situations before when fundraising has been challenged for all sorts of reasons, and you have some advice on some techniques we should be trying and implementing to do the best we can during these trying times. What advice do you have for fundraisers? Well, um, I don't know if I have any new techniques, but I think some of the old tried and true techniques might still work with, yes. with some adjustments, and, and, and here's why. Um, you know, in recent years, there's been quite a lot of talk about uh, direct mail as a dinosaur of fundraising that doesn't work anymore. Um, there are several venues which have proven that's not to be true. Right. Direct mail does still work. Um, and of course, there's been the growth of e-fundraising. We know that works as well. And we know that combination of those, both uh, what people call snail mail and email, uh, combining them together uh, probably is more effective than either one alone. Uh, the telephone probably has been a dying kind of fundraising strategy. Uh, the special event, well, with the new strictures, we may not be able to do special events as we've done them. But he here's some of my thoughts on this. Um, for example, yesterday, I walked out to our mailbox. We live in a neighborhood where the mailboxes are on the street. Yes. I went out there three different times. Why? Because I was housebound. You know, I wanted to see, did I get any mail? Uh, so in today's environment, direct mail might be welcomed to people just so they have a contact with the outside world. Now, does that guarantee that direct mail is gonna boom in fundraising results? No, it doesn't guarantee that. But I would suggest that direct mail is a lifeline for some people today. And I, I remember a story of my grandmother, now deceased, um, but uh, she, she used to complain a lot because she outlived most of her friends. Mm. So, you know, who does she interact with? Um, she loved receiving direct mail mm. because it was contact with someone on the outside. And in some instances, it was like a friend, you know, receiving a, a direct mail piece from a nonprofit organization. Now, did she give a lot? I really don't know. We never talked about that. But um, I would just think in terms today, your direct mail pieces, it's a chance for you to tell your story, continue to tell your story in a compelling way. Thank donors. Keep them informed of who you are, what you're doing, why it's important, why it might be important to them. So your direct mail might get opened at a far higher rate today than it ever has before. You know, Tim, this is a great point that you're raising. First of all, as we said, even before this virus challenge hit us, uh, we were teaching that direct mail is still alive and well. And, and the reason, even with social media, is because of social media. If we're receiving less direct mail than ever before, your direct mail letter is going to stand out just because there's less in the mailbox these days compared to 10 and 20 years ago. Now you're saying, even more so today, it's a way to have a personal connection. And it can be the big mailing from the mail house. But what I'm also hearing you saying is just my current donor list, I can be sending letters. Is that uh, right? Absolutely. Um, you know, I think the key to all fundraising today going forward, probably always has been, but maybe more so now that we're in this urgent situation, is information and communication. And, you know, a direct mail piece is, I mean, you're inside someone's home, okay, and you can make this personal. So some of your direct mail Today, maybe more of it needs to be, thanks for everything you've done to help us up to this point. Here's what we're doing going forward uh, to deal with this crisis, um, to continue to deliver our message and, and uh, to deliver our mission and um, to serve our beneficiaries and to serve our community. And you know, thanks for what you've done before. And if you're interested you know, staying with us, we'd really appreciate that. Go ahead. And I, I was going to say, if you're sending thousands of letters, this doesn't help. But if, if it's a smaller number, that little handwritten note in the bottom right corner goes a long way to stand out. No kidding. Yeah. So 
you know, here's an opportunity maybe to personalize things in a way we haven't paid so close attention to recently. Uh, and related then to uh, to the direct mail, uh, you know, e-fundraising is another way yeah. to stay in touch with your people. You can personalize this pretty highly if, if, you, um, if, if you have the resources to do it. Um, and then, you know, special events. Well, our special events are going to be limited, but how many of them can be virtual special events? So how do we build community through the digital world? Uh, so they're old strategies. Um, you know, what's What's falling out of the picture to some degree is that personal face-to-face -face visit, vi visit, which we have historically said is the most effective fundraising, but, you know, personal telephone call. Um, we can still uh, make things as personal as possible uh, by engaging all of these various kinds of strategies. What we're trying to do certainly is not to minimize the challenge that fundraisers are facing today. What we're trying to do is find opportunity amidst this challenge and you know, Tim, while a lot of us are staying home more often, not all of us have our jobs that we're allowed to do that, but we know many people in the United States are working from home. Let's say they still have the same volume of work. They still aren't commuting to work, so they have some extra time in their day. And quite candidly, they may have less volume of work. So what do they have time for? Certainly folks are gonna be watching TV, doing, doing some other things, but they're also gonna be online more. They're also going to be walking out to the mailbox more, looking for that social connection. So that's how we're trying to find opportunity amidst this yeah, crisis. Well, that's, that's well said. Um, the, the important thing, I think, uh, regardless of what strategies you decide to use or, or to, I, I would say the most important thing you need to do is not do anything. Yeah, don't stop. Don't do anything. Yeah. Like, don't do nothing. Right. Uh, double negative there. But, um, and I would also say, you know, I, I don't know who this song was by, but it was a relatively recent com contemporary song. I think the title of it was Don't Stop Believing." Yeah, Journey. Uh, uh, thank you. <laughs> I think we have to keep believing. And I think uh, we, we're all doing good work. And some of our nonprofits may not be on the front lines the way the health industry is today. But, um, you know, you may be in education and, and you may be um, teaching the next scientist who's going to find the next great discovery. You may be in, in the arts and the arts are going to be a, a real salve for a lot of us in these coming days. Uh, whether we view that, you know, in person at the museum or we, or we see it online or we see it on television. But um, if your mission was valid last month, it's and it's still valid today, you have to keep believing that you're doing good work and that people are going to care about you. And some of your most loyal donors are going to want to help. They're going to want to help you continue to what you want to do. Um, our, our donors stay loyal to us during the rough times as, as well as they stay with us during the good times. And we know that from data that our colleagues at the school have gathered over the years. Man-made crises, uh, natural disasters, whatever it is, people tend to stay loyal to, um, to the organizations they care the most about. Will there be a decline in giving? Most likely. Right. But uh, will, will donors stay loyal? Most likely. Right. And while the, um, the Great Recession, we saw a great decline in wealth and a decline in income, we've seen that come back until the last couple of days. But we know that philanthropy did not decline nearly at the percentage that um, income and wealth declined during that recession. Now, you know, yet to determine, yet to see what's going to happen going forward from today. But I believe donors look for uh, stable organizations that keep on keeping on, and I think they want to help. And so we need to be wise about the strategies that we utilize. Uh, we need to understand that these are tough times and that fundraising likely will see a decline, but we need to continue fundraising. And Tim, as we do, and we, we teach this always in the fundraising school, even when we're not wrestling with this pesky coronavirus, is that certainly we serve our participants, we serve our beneficiaries, we serve our cause, but we also serve our donors, and these messages to our donors still need to have empathy and understanding from yeah. where they are today. Good point, yeah. And in fact, whatever we do from a fundraising perspective, I think the leading uh, message ought to be, um, we understand you're in a similar situation as a donor, and you need to think very seriously about your resources and what you want to do with those resources. Uh, we hope that you can stay with us and help us help others, but um, you, know, you have to take care of yourself.
And that's been our message here at the fundraising school. While we've needed to close down our in-person courses for a while, we're still open for business. We have online courses. Uh, if you have time and resource for that, we have these free podcasts every week. Gosh, we have about two years of podcasts archived on our website right now. You have some time on your hands. You can maybe uh, continue your professional development in that way. We have free webinars right now on a weekly basis that are more conversation than presentation, giving you lots of time to ask your questions, share your best ideas, share your concerns, vent with us. We're in this together. And so uh, you can follow us on Twitter and Facebook and our email to learn more about that. And of course, the Fundraising School also can start on our website at philanthropy.iupui.edu forward slash the fundraising school. Stay safe stay healthy, practice that social distancing, practice that physical distancing when you have to be with others, but by all means, follow Tim's advice, keep fundraising. The case that was great two months ago is still great today, and continue to make your case with empathy towards your donors because your cause still matters. With Dr. Tim Seiler, this is Bill Sanjakevich, and now you are now more fully informed on this first day from the Fundraising School.